cookies are so bad. Hi guys, happy Sunday. It is a beautiful Sunday morning as we continue our lesson on gross, where we talk about the icky, yucky, disgusting, stinky, smelly, gross stories of the Bible. Today's lesson is going to be from Jonah. That's a familiar name, right? Do you guys remember Jonah and his time hanging out in the belly of a certain animal? Well, if you don't remember, have no fear, because we're going to talk all about it today. So open up your Bibles to Jonah chapter one. We're gonna start from the very beginning. But before we do that, did you notice some people have really bad allergies? You guys probably saw my little video clip at the beginning of this in which I was sneezing and saying my allergies were bad. Well, that was thankfully just for pretend. But a lot of people in the world have really bad allergies, but people with allergies are super lucky. And you might be thinking, lucky to be sneezing and coughing and sniffling all the time? How are you lucky? Did you know people with bad allergies, they actually cannot smell as well. And that's mainly because if you have allergies going on, you're sneezing, you're sniffling, you're having allergy symptoms, the stuff that's inside of your nose can kind of block out the smells around you which in the case of our friend Jonah that we're gonna talk about today, probably would have been a really helpful thing. Now, whether or not Jonah had allergies, I'm not sure, but I do know that he spent some time in the belly of a giant fish, and fish has a very distinct smell. If you guys have ever been to a seafood restaurant or maybe your mom or dad or grandparents have made a plate of fish like salmon or tilapia, ooh, now I'm hungry. You guys probably know what fish smells like. Now, if we were all in person together, I would have warmed up a plate of fish in the microwave and passed it around for all of you to take a big whiff of. But we're not, so you just have to use your amazing imagination, which I know you can do great with. Seafood is one of the smellier foods in the world. And it can be fish or shrimp or shellfish, but it has a really strong smell before, during, and after cooking, actually. Um, some people don't mind the smell of seafood. Like I personally, I enjoy the smell of seafood because I really love the taste of seafood. So for me, the smell is a reminder that I'm about to eat something really tasty. But for other people who maybe don't like seafood, they can't stand the smell. And also it's very important that if you are eating seafood, you have to wash your hands really well after you eat it. Otherwise you might go through the rest of the day smelling like your dinner. <laughs> And if you had a big piece of fish for dinner, you might not want to smell like a fish. So you might notice that at seafood restaurants, they give you those little hand wipes. That's why guys, so that you can get the smell off your hands. Did you know that? Now we all do. The man in the Bible who understood the overpowering stench, stench is a word for like a really gross smell. He understood the overpowering stench of seafood and his name was Jonah. Jonah was a prophet that God actually chose to go and preach a message to the city of Nineveh. Now, you guys might not have heard of Nineveh, but it was a city full of wicked, evil people who made a lot of bad choices. And because of that, Jonah was a little nervous to go there and hang out with all those people, let alone try to tell those people about God, because maybe he was scared that they would react badly. I don't know. But Nineveh was full of wicked, sinful people. However, God really wanted Jonah to go there and preach a message. What do you think Jonah did? Well, he ended up in the belly of a fish somehow, right? And unfortunately that is because he decided, no, I'm not gonna do what God asks because I don't feel like talking to those people, so I'm not gonna. Instead, he actually decided to hop on a boat and sail away in the opposite direction. Now, we've learned in a few of our lessons that God is not really happy when we don't obey him and listen to him. And in this case, he's like, Jonah, dude, I gave you a very specific message. Why are you running away? So Jonah tried to run from God and he ended up spending 
three days in the belly of a giant fish. Now, he jumped on the boat to flee and to go away. And so Jonah's on this boat and he's like, <laughs> I don't have to go talk to the people in Nineveh this great. I'm gonna sail away from all my problems. <laughs> Peace out problems. <sighs> Didn't work so well. Jonah ended up falling off of the boat, falling into the sea, and being swallowed by a gigantic whale. So pretend like this is the whale's mouth. It was just like <clears throat> and ate Jonah. But Jonah didn't die. He just went down the whale's throat into the belly and lived in the belly of that fish for three days. Now you can imagine how that smelled. He's inside of the stomach of a big fish. And this is a fish that eats other fish and maybe little algae things that are in the ocean. So there's probably a lot of smells going on. He's stuck inside of this fish. He's like, well, I made a bad choice. I should have just listened to God and gone to Nineveh and preached that message. But instead, here I am inside of this fish. Choices have consequences, right? So Jonah got to learn that firsthand. And Jonah might have been thinking, oh my goodness, how insane that I am stuck in the belly of this fish. But if he had not been eaten by the fish, and if he had just been in the ocean for three days, he might not have survived. So really, this was God's way of keeping Jonah safe long enough for him to think about his choices and make a better one in the future. Because again, guys, our God is a God of forgiveness. He loves us. And even if we make a really big mistake, like saying, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do what you say. I'm gonna go sail away on this boat. Maybe he has to teach us a lesson, but he loves us and he's gonna give us another chance because forgiveness, it's a really awesome thing that God offers each and every one of us. Is after three days of being in the belly of the fish, the fish spat Jonah out onto dry land. So he was just like, Bleh onto dry land and Jonah landed on the beach, probably covered in fish belly juices and ugh, icky, gross stuff, but he survived and God gave him a second chance to try again and go to Nineveh and preach the message. Because guys, remember the most important thing to take from this and any lesson that I'm teaching is that God loves you. God loves all of us and he's willing to give anybody a second chance who asks. And you can probably believe that Jonah was asking for a second chance while he was in the belly of that fish because I certainly would be. So whatever mistakes you've made, whatever bad things you've done, if you feel bad about it and you want to be forgiven, talk to God about it and God will forgive you. It's really as easy as that. Pretty awesome, right? It's kind of ironic that Jonah learned a lesson about second chances on his seafood journey. Um, after all, God had asked Jonah to tell the people in Nineveh that he was giving them one more chance. That was actually the whole purpose of him going there was to say, hey guys, you're living a really bad life. You're making a lot of bad choices, but God's gonna give you another chance. So kind of funny that Jonah then learned that lesson himself on the way to teaching that lesson to them. Don't you think? God never gets tired of giving us another chance. And that's really amazing because I don't know about you, but if somebody wrongs me or hurts my feelings, it's really hard to want to keep giving them chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. After chance. But that's what we're supposed to do because that's what God does for us. So we're supposed to love people. We're supposed to forgive people because God loves us and God forgives us. And that's the moral of the story. So the gross factor is that Jonah spent some time in the stinky, smelly belly of a fish. Hopefully that won't happen to any of you. But if it does, just remember, ask God for a second chance and then listen to him when he tells you to do something. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you learned a little bit about Jonah and about that story that maybe you didn't know before. And as always, if you have any questions at all about anything, have your parents email me and I am happy to talk with you guys over a Zoom call or send you some worksheets or coloring sheets, whatever you might need. Just let me know, my email is below. And um, I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful rest of your Sunday. Try to stay away from the bellies of fishes, but listen to God and all will be well. 
Thank you guys. Have a great day. Bye.